So welcome everybody. This is our uh, True Source of Healing uh, live webcast. We will do the inner refuge prayers and I will guide the practice. The center of the Victoria Mandala, one's own body, the source of all positive quality without exception, is the expanse within three channels and five chakras. I take refuge in this body of emptiness. So sit comfortably. Bring your full attention to your body. Be aware of your body fully. Be aware of the stillness in your body fully. Feel the connection of your mind to your body. And gradually rest in that connection. Whenever you lose the connection, be aware, reconnect and continue. When we lose the connection of our mind to the body, it's okay, but it's not okay to not be aware of that. Be aware of that and reconnect.
Be aware of your breath. Not hold, breathe deep. And continuously rest in that connection to the stillness of your body. And gradually be aware of inner stillness, a stillness of your being, a stillness beyond the stillness of your body, beyond the physical body. The inner stillness is unbounded sacred space. A body of emptiness, the first inner refuge. Be aware of that unbounded sacred space. I feel the sense of refuge. deep sense of inspiration, joy, devotion, like a monk who is practicing for many, many years, like 20, 30 years, and finally encountering a Buddha. This inner sacred space is the Buddha. You are like that monk. Feel that sense of devotion, joy, to encounter and experience this inner stillness, inner sacred space, the inner refuge. When we say, I take refuge in this body of emptiness, this is what we are referring to. Second refuge, Oh, 
all the gather clouds of suffering and misery are completely clear by the wisdom wind, revealing the unelaborated primordially pure expanse of the sky. I take refuge in this body of light. Now, as a second refuge, be aware of the silence. Feel the silence. Connect and rest in that silence. Rest deeper in that silence. Continuously breathe deep and feel the connection of the cyber sangha around the world collectively experiencing the silence. Feel and rest. Rest deeper. Rest without trying to rest, without any effort. Just rest. But feel, hear and connect to the silence. There's a big difference between just being quiet and hearing silence or feeling silence. It's like a possessing a chocolate and tasting a chocolate. So taste the silence. Be aware and connect with the silence. When you lose the connection, be aware that you lost, reconnect and continue. Repeat that as many times necessary. And gradually be aware of inner silence. Silence which is beyond just the absence of sound. A silence of being. The silence which cannot interfere by sound or noises. or by disturbances of thoughts and emotions. The silence of being.
Be aware of deep restfulness in that silence. In that inner silence, there is a presence of awareness, a sense of knowing, a sense of being, a sense of present. This awareness is in our light. When we refer, I take refuge in the body of light, is referring to this awareness. When you're aware of this, when you're aware of connection to it, then you are naturally taking refuge. Third refuge, From the pavilion of the five wisdom lights, rays from non dual sphere of light emanate, clearing the web of darkness of ignorance. I take refuge in this body of great bliss. As we are continuously being in that inner stillness and inner silence, now be aware of the spaciousness of the mind, the openness of the mind, like a sky, like a space. In that sky or in that sacred space, rest, be aware, connect and rest. Like if you are seeing the crystal clear sky in desert, you're being aware, you're seeing it, you're connecting with it, in it, and you're fully resting in it. You're seeing inner crystal clear sky of your mind. Be aware and rest. 
as you do that, gradually you'll feel the sense of presence and warmth. Like when the sky is clear without clouds, the sun of awareness shines. When the sun of awareness arises, there is a warmth of that sun. There is a bliss of that sun. Same way, when inner space, in awareness is there, inner sky or inner light is there, then there is a presence of warmth. This warmth, this great bliss, is the third refuge. Feel that. Realize that way. Connect that way. Feeling sense of deep, sense of gratitude, joy, encountering inner Buddhas. Rest in that trust, rest in that warmth. This inner sacred space is the true source of healing. The entire a 12 life webcast title as a true source of healing. The true source is this inner sacred space, which Hopefully, many of you are having glimpse of experience this moment. And we all are helping each other to connect and have that experience. Whatever elements, earth, a sense of stability in your life, who you are, your relationship to others, your sense of, sense of who you are, your roles and responsibilities, your thoughts and feelings, they all need a stability, a grounding quality, an earth element. Or water, a sense of comfort, ease. It's important to have that, a comfort in who you are, who you are with, what you're doing. A fire, 
a joy, enthusiasm, a drive. We all need that in life. Air element of flexibility, a flow, able to move, shift, change, grow, develop. discover space openness a source of event creativity So whatever the element, the core element that you have been working last many months, just be aware and allow whatever element is coming this moment or you are aware this moment, connect with that. Like feeling stable, connected, grounded, ease, feeling comfortable. Flexibility, air, a flow, not feeling stuck, feeling very open, just be aware of this quality or all of this quality or any specific quality. Be aware of these essential elemental quality which is arising or presence in that sacred space, the true source of healing. From the source, this energy arising, this dynamic energy is arising, these winds are flowing, these experiences and feeling are happening. Be conscious and connect. When you are conscious and connecting that presence of specific elemental quality in that true source, that is the moment you are retrieving essence of elements, like you are actually receiving the healing energy. Feel it, allow it to your body, to your speech, to your mind. To heal. Just continuously be aware of that as we sing the mantras. <clears throat>
so gradually you can open your eye. So many of you probably following this webcast, so you exactly know what we just did was to practicing with three precious pills and entering into the inner refuge. And um, I hope that many of you have a glimpse of experiences of the inner refuge, which is uh, the true source of healing. When we were talking about the true source of healing last many months, so the basically the only way to feel connection to the true source of healing is through the three precious pills and uh, to, to actually experience the essence of elements in their deep qualities it's only way to do that is to connect with the refuge or true source and once we connect with that qualities whatever the elemental quality that you're working on if the moment we connect with that that is the moment when you are retrieving basically when we say the concept of retrieving is the moment you are aware you are retrieving if for example if you feel that your life has so much gift in your life and that you see that that moment and you feel very joyful so moment you are joyful because what you see in your life that joy that joy experiences of joy is what you are retrieving to heal so same way each of these uh, elemental qualities when you are aware of these specific quality then you are retrieving those quality from the true source so that's what we we have been doing for last many months so so I hope that you all are continuing and uh, feeling uh, support by these webcasts and all the you know other materials that we provide. So so here I'm going to um, trying to go through a few a few questions. So one of the questions here with Irania is when the soul is lost, does it happen all at once or can it happen gradually? and get worse so so first of all mm, probably many of you already know that concept of soul is this the balance of five essential elements in our life so uh, in according to the burnt tradition it says sometime it can happen that you know uh, in one moment you lose a lot of that quality like for example if somebody has an accident uh, somebody have a, a very deep like a very powerful like, kind of nightmare or something or or somebody who uh, a, who loses uh, a very close ones loved ones like a, a mother loses the child or, or something like that. For example, one, one time somebody was telling me a story that when she lost her grandfather, who was basically everything for her, uh, was grandpa was uh, father, mother, friend, uh, support, which provided all the elemental qualities because she did not really have that closeness to the father or the mother. So when the grandfather passed away and she just lost a lot of qualities and particularly she felt like she lost a ground, a grounding quality in her life. And since then, so for her adulthood, many moments she felt that like very difficult to ground herself find with jobs of able to stick a specific job or I do one specific thought or even a relationship with the finding a man trying to able to connect that that level she felt like very much affected by that so sometimes it could be like that losing somebody very close just in one second you feel like a deep loss of something that's very possible so 
also sometimes imagine that uh, somebody who is working in the office that you hate to work. So you every day or at least like five days a week, every day when you go to work, you feel like you, you just hate to go there. Just think about like how many uh, hours that you feel that discomfort, a stressful, dislike. And if you keep on losing that one year, two year, three year, five year, 10 year, 15 year, in some point you lose gradually like that. So there's a many different ways in which you know, like you can lose it gradually or you can lose it suddenly and it can happen either way. So the next question is, do we need to do a ceremonies, uh, rituals to, to do the soul retrieval or do we can follow these uh, like webcasts and these uh, instructions, guided, guided meditation instruction and do by ourselves? Again, you know, you can do both ways. So. I, I, as I explained in the book, uh, there are very specific traditional way of doing a soul retrieval. Well, let's say this way. I'm not saying like this is not a traditional. There are, there are different systems like uh, what we call causal vehicles, uh, and in that system, there's a lot of rituals involved and the approach is a little different. So the losses of soul sometimes seen as seen as a stolen by a spirit, a soul stolen by a somebody, the outer forces or outer beings, spirits, other entities. So when there's a belief like that, so when sometime um, in those cases, there are particular rituals called soul retrieval rituals. So basically it involves a lot of, um, um, yeah, it involves full set of rituals. So I think, they're very powerful, no question about it. And for some people that might be very beneficial to able to do that. And, uh, but for some other people, uh, not necessarily doing that ritual or not, not looking from that sense of dualistic approach, like there's somebody else who is stealing your soul rather than you are not being conscious of your, your essence of your mind, therefore you're losing your quality, therefore you're losing your soul. It's something that happening in you because of lack of awareness and disconnectedness or unable to process the experiences of life. And that's what's happening just in you rather than blaming to the ghosts and spirits and other entities. So there's a different approach. It's basically um, um, the both, uh, this both way is possible. So. Um, uh, of course, uh, in these last uh, many months that my emphasis of the teaching of the true source of healing of the book, it's not ritual related. So it's very much more that you will able to retrieve your own soul as following these instructions. So I would say, you know, it depends, depends if you, how you feel. So, um, for example, if somebody who really feels like there's external forces, there's somebody there out there, entity who's, who's disturbing them and stealing them, if I, I tell them there's no one there who's stealing your soul, they will not believe me. They'll say, no, there is. There is there. There is the specific kind, the specific kind of name, character, and everything. That's how they strongly believe. So then, they, for them, they have to work with that level of uh, uh, understanding but then another person who does not really believe in that who who clearly sees that my losses of my connection to myself it has something to do with myself but to that person if you're trying to convince or oh, there is a ghost who's doing it it will be hard also so so it's very much like a different level of understanding so um, so that's that and then um, Next question. 
I try to go home. So I try to go home referring to going to an inner refuge. Uh, do I have to force? Or do I have to force or do I, do I just naturally enter into it? So that's important, I think important. It's also that um, think about this, like uh, every, every single day, all of us, we go out. We go out to, you know, to work, uh, to whatever you're doing, you outgo, you travel. End of the day, you come back home. End of the day, you have come back home. You, you can be going for a day, two day, week, month, but end of the end of the day, you come back home. We all need to come back home uh, in real life. Uh, so, and we kind of know what that means. Wherever you feel home, if there is specific place that you feel home, you come back to that place. And those you don't have feeling specific home, then it's a little bit challenging. They kind of wander too long in different places. But most of the time we come back home. So same way, same way in, in the practices that no matter how much you are suffering, no matter how much you get lost, no matter how much you are disconnected, some point you got to come back home. You have to come back home. You have to uh, come back to the source. And you have to realize how much you have, how much you're losing, how much you have lost, how much you're disconnected, and how much you can uh, heal yourself by coming back home. So, so it's, I think this concept of coming back home, it's very important. And so the question is, uh, should I force it or not? Absolutely, no, uh, no one should force it. No one should force it, but again, it's very easy to say, don't force it, but we all force it. Like when I'm guiding meditation, probably many of you are trying really hard. And, and some of you are trying maybe not that hard. Some, are, some of you are not trying at all. So some of you are just hearing the voice, guided meditation, and just able to enter right away in that state. So it very much depends on each individual, but general concept is not to force at all. So uh, in, in, in the teachings, it says meditation without meditator is the greatest or great meditation. What does that mean? There's always, uh, if there is a sense of self who is separate from the meditation, then that's duality. But if there is a sense of self, not only there is a sense of self, but the sense of self who is suffering, or putting so much effort, painful effort to be aware, or painfully trying to be joy, joyful, or painfully trying to be happy, or effortfully trying to rest. So this is the, what we usually we try and do is, you know, painfully trying to be happy, effortfully, effortfully trying to rest, and with effort, you cannot rest. With pain, you cannot feel joy. So if you allow joy, let joy, allow the pain, let the pain go, joy, joy will arise. Allow the effort and be aware of the effort, let effort go and the restful will arise. So, so in the end, what I will say is try not to force. So when I say try not to force, then you will be trying, and if you're trying too hard, then you're already forcing it. So, so it's, a, it's a game of mind. You have to kind of really be conscious within yourself, or if there's anybody who's meditating, I'm seeing something, is this anybody's looking? Is this anybody's putting too much effort? always trying to be aware of that. Whenever you see, aware of it, it will help to naturally relax. But if not, breath is very good, good way to trying to, uh, trying to let it go.
So the next question here is also a little bit about, you know, um, is there is a relationship between the stillness of the body and emptiness? Emptiness, like when we, as we prayer, this is uh, Claudia from Germany. Uh, and is there is a relationship between silence of the speech and the light? Uh, is there is a relationship between spacious, spaciousness of the mind and the great bliss? So obviously, uh, there is a relationship. That's why in the prayer, that's why we say, I take refuge in the body of emptiness. With this, that's why when we practice in the, th uh, how you say, the three precious pills or bringing attention to the body, stillness of the body, you're, you're introducing to the first refuge. Um, bringing attention to the silence of the speech, you are, in, you are introduced to the second refuge, which, which is the inner light. Uh, bringing aware of the spaciousness of the mind, you are introduced to the third refuge, which is the great bliss. So why the stillness of the body introduces the uh, body of emptiness, silence introduces this light or the awareness, and the spaciousness introduces the warmth. Of course, there is a connection. So uh, these connections are, uh, of course, one can talk a lot about it, but it, it really it does not help so much to talking a lot about it. Uh, but it's more like uh, uh, if you practice, like when we did the guided practice, we spent quite a bit of time doing the practice. So being aware of the stillness of the body, then being aware of the inner stillness, then gradually, I mean, probably the amount of time we did the practice is not long enough. We have to do very long and deep that you really feel the step of when you bring your attention to your body, you feel immediately like a, your body is like a great support for your mind, like a walking stick. The one who cannot walk very well, the moment you give the walking stick, they feel the stability right away or able to get up and stand and able to walk. So same way, the moment you bring attention to the body, mind immediately feels stable. But st that stability only coming from the f attention to the body. And when you, f when you master it in a little bit, then some point, there's no need to, to draw attention to the body because it's, it's, the stability is within mind itself without drawing attention to the body. So that's what more what we call inner stillness. And that inner stillness, if you rest deep enough, then, then only you feel the spaciousness of the mind or you feel the emptiness of the mind. That means basically what we are referring here is the, the unbounded sacred space of the mind. So just feeling completely open, unbounded openness. Or maybe another way to say that will be feeling free, freedom. Feeling fearless. These are the experiences of freedom, fearless, confidence. So they're very much experientially very much connected. The stillness connected with that body of emptiness and the silence. For example, the silence. What interferes the true awareness? The true awareness is the awareness of self, your, yourself. A true self. So what interferes that is the voices of voices and thoughts. So when you have a thought or like thoughts of like a, um, I'm afraid, I'm lost, I'm sad. That thought obscures the true awareness because that thought is looking I am lost I am sad the, the one who is producing sadness is not you but you're identifying with that pain therefore that identity it's, it's a form of your thought or it's a voice inner voice who's keep on talking continuously 
the moment that inner voice stops or inner thoughts is less, it's very natural you feel like a sense of presence, but sense of clear presence. Maybe sense of clear presence is like a like a example. Sometime I give an example of a Friday afternoon instead of Monday morning. Nine o'clock Monday morning, a collective professional pain body. There's no clarity there, no sense of freedom there, no sense of joy there. There is a pain, discomfort. very much like a pervaded your being. And Monday morning, it's very difficult to be aware of your true self because you are too connected with your professional identity, professional pain body. Maybe Friday afternoon, a little better, but not, it's not compared to a full meditation where you have self-realization, you can, of course, not compare Friday to that. But when there is absence of that pain body, there is a pain speech, or in this case, pain speech, more likely there is a presence of that light, the awareness, because it just naturally allows. When the clouds are not there, it's very natural for sun to shine. Sun does not need to put any effort to shine when the cloud is not there. So that's the relationship. So the third one is the same thing, same principle. The warmth, the warmth arises because cloud is not, sun is shining. Sun is shining because cloud is not there. So there clearly these connections are there. And then the, the um, let's see, uh, maybe a few more questions here. So one, one question is um, from Jose uh, from Spain. So this is an important question. It's sometime when we talk about like uh, uh, cutting ego or, or, or clearing ego or even in some cases like a, like destroying ego. Uh, so the question is like sometimes there are many people who who really do not have a sense of clear sense of their identity. So so it's a question of um, can, does we do do we need to, to build build a healthy ego bef before we transcend it? Do we need uh, some sense of clear eye before we uh, this, how you say, overcome or liberate from that sense of I. So that I think is a very uh, good question. Um, maybe it's difficult exactly, the answer is maybe it's difficult, uh, but maybe I would say some, some sense that uh, there are a lot of people um, who clearly is lost, lost in a sense of there are a sense of self, uh, their sense of their role, uh, their purpose of their life, and, and even when they draw a specific attention, attention to their job or anything, they f they're kind of very much lost. So because they don't have a sense of clear identity. And uh, so maybe in some cases for for one, a person's well-being, uh, of finding some sense of purpose and a clear sense of identity might be helpful. Helpful. Uh, but on the other hand, also some case, sometimes people uh, identify with the weakness. You know, they are lost, but their identity is lost. People who are sick, for example, there are some people who they are always sick, and then they kind of like to be always sick also because they have the most of their friends are through that sickness. 
they maybe they have a club that joined with that through that sickness their friends that they, they talk about that sickness or somehow they they identify with that also so if they strongly identify with that those weaknesses i think then it's important to overcome that but when somebody does not have any identity neither in the weakness or in the strength or good or bad then maybe sometime i think um, maybe it's helpful you know like specifically the people who are wor working in the, in the psychology and the, uh, maybe you meet many of those kind of people so I think uh, maybe it's helpful um, so but but still I think as, as the practices you still do the practices of the three precious pills so you're still trying to uh, uh, rest through your body rest through your speech and rest through your mind I think as far as um, three precious practices meditation of three precious pill does not change so 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 maybe this uh, topic is a little complicated and, and I will not probably not go too much into it I think uh, here we are like uh, uh, almost I think we can close um, so maybe I'll let's do this a little bit so we I think now we're going to um, since it's also here in Delhi, it's like a 1.36 in the morning. So I think it's a good time to uh, close this. 2015 online events, uh, Saturday, October 24th, 3 p.m. New York time. I think uh, uh, you see it there. Uh, this is a webcast we will be doing from Virginia, from Serenity Ridge. and. Uh, uh, Everybody welcome to join that one and then Saturday November 14th New York time uh, true source of healing part 10 uh, so The power of the warmth physical healing so that uh, we have been um, Yeah, so we on, on let's see beginning of no, November 14th so November 14th is this particular um, practices that we are we will introduce is more uh, working with the physical pain actually physical pain literally physical pain that in in my experiences that when we introduce the inner refuge practices and uh, people who have uh, physical issues and when they work through their physical issue through the inner refuge practices uh, incredible uh, uh, outcome results the healing healing powers so so we have designed this specific uh, for that so um, we will be doing um, on November 14 in introducing that and also then there will be uh, if those who are interested to join also with the glide wing uh, the online workshop also there will be more longer uh, specific focus and a longer versions of that uh, practice on that physical um, practice how is it, the healing of the physical pain or physical illnesses so so we'll be uh, you know guiding that more so you will get more information for those you're interested uh, both in glidewing.com or org. so these are the next uh, three uh, events so so I think that's all now I wanted to um, as I'm here in Delhi I did not know first how I was going to uh, do this and uh, Raji is uh, here and who have helped I wanted to thank you uh, for helping setting up uh, here in Delhi and um, so, so now we will do the dedication. <clears throat> so.
May I attain great confidence in three refugees. May my experience and realization of the wisdom of three door increase. In purifying three poisons, may I obtain three bodies. In liberating my own being, may I benefit others. Thank you.